Hello friends, this video on our environment part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at the next one. What is biological magnification? Will the levels of this magnification be different at different levels of the ecosystem? Now I have already spoken about biological magnification, right? What is it? It is the progressive increase in the concentration of harmful chemicals at each trophic level of a food chain. Now, as we saw, let us suppose if there are some harmful chemicals, normally these chemicals are non-biodegradable. That means they will not get decomposed into simpler forms. So now if one organism consumed it and if some other organism consumes the same organism, the quantity of that chemical keep increasing. So the higher the trophic level, the higher is the concentration of the harmful chemical. It is like that. So that means the second part of the question is, will the levels be different at different levels of the ecosystem? Yes, of course, it's going to be different. So higher the trophic level, greater is the concentration. So let us look at an example. Now here we can see there is an earthworm in the soil. Okay. Now let us suppose that this soil, let us take the example of a chemical called DDT. So it is generally put to improve the quality of soil and all. So let us suppose that the concentration of DDT in the soil is 10 particles per million. That means for 1 million particle of soil, there is one particle of DDT. Now this earthworm feeds on the soil. So let us suppose it feeds on the, it eats up the soil. So now when it eats up the soil, it doesn't eat one particle of soil. It is going to eat a lot of particles of soil. Then it is found that inside this earthworm, do you know what was the concentration of DDT? It increased. The concentration was somewhere around 86 particles per million. And now when this earthworm was in turn eaten up by this bird, just imagine because this bird is not going to eat just one earthworm. One earthworm is not going to be enough for the bird. She is going to eat too many earthworms. Right now, and every earthworm is going to have a, too much of concentration of this uh, DDT. So it was found that inside the bird, the concentration increased up to 250 ppm. And it is a harmful chemical, DDT. So if its concentration is too much, it is going to be harmful to, to that organism. So this concentration becomes so high that the bird can even die. So if you look at the food chain here, so the bird is at the highest trophic level. So the higher is the trophic level, the higher is the concentration of the chemical. And this increase in the concentration of chemicals is known as biological magnification. The next one, what are the problems caused by non-biodegradable wastes that we generate? Non-biodegradable wastes are those which cannot be broken down into simpler forms. So you, I'm very sure that you know what are the problems. Accumulation of such wastes pollute water and soil because they are not decomposed into simpler forms. So they are going to lie there for a long time as it is. So we will get some foul smell. The water will get polluted with those waste materials. The soil will also get polluted. Non-biodegradable wastes occupy a good amount of space. So a good amount of space on the earth is occupied by wastes. And that is little unacceptable, right? We have a huge population in our country. So some people do not have proper space to build a good house. And you have so much of space allotted only for such wastes, which cannot be broken down into simpler forms. So they are going to lie there as it is for years after years. They can be extremely harmful if consumed by a living organism. Now let us suppose if I talk of plastics, we throw plastic bottles just like that. We don't bother to throw them off. Now just imagine the area where these kind of wastes are simply kept just like that. In, in big cities like Delhi or Bangalore, you would have seen there are some areas where you see only garbage. There are very big humps of garbage and they are just dumped there simply like that. So the biodegradable ones will get degraded in due course of time, but the non-biodegradable ones will remain as it is. So now let us suppose some animal, some insect or some bird, if they pick up some plastic material 
and if they try to eat them, what's going to happen? It will get choked inside their throat and that organism is going to die. Because whatever waste material is there, that is actually waste. That is not going to be of any good to any living organism except the decomposers. So these wastes, if they are consumed by a living organism, it can actually kill that organism. So these are some of the major problems caused by non-biodegradable wastes and that is why we should put a check on the usage of non-biodegradable materials. If all the waste we generate is biodegradable, will this have no impact on the environment? So now the next question says that, okay, now if you say that there are so many disadvantages of using non-biodegradable materials, now let us suppose if we stop non-biodegradable materials completely. So now whatever waste is coming out is all biodegradable. So in that case, is there no harmful effect on the environment? Is it completely positive effect? Or e even now there are still some negative effects on the environment. Well, in this case, the impact is mostly positive. So mostly positive impact on the environment because they would be broken down by decomposers so they are not going to lie as it is there for the entire future after some time it is going to get into the soil because they'll get decomposed by the decomposers they act as a raw material to produce valuable products so they can actually when they are broken down into simpler forms and they can be used for some other purposes which can be good for the environment but there are some negative effects as well. For example, during the process of decomposition, foals smell in their locality which increases the risk of spreading diseases. So if the amount of biodegradable waste is very high, so it is very obvious that the time which it's to be, needs to be taken to decompose that huge amount of waste is also going to be high. So during that course of time, there will be some foal smell because they are all waste materials actually. So because of that, there might be some air pollution, there will be risk of spreading diseases. So all those things might be there. But for when you consider the long term effect, it is definitely going to be helpful for the environment. Another one. Why is damage to the ozone layer a, con a cause for concern? What steps are being taken to limit this damage? I have, we have already talked about this ozone layer, a protective layer which saves us from the ultraviolet radiation of the sun. So if there is no ozone layer, all ultraviolet radiation is going to come to the earth and that is going to cause many diseases like skin cancer. They, they are going to affect the health of not only living organisms but also plants. They are adversely going to affect plants. So there will be no life on earth if all the ultraviolet rays start reaching the earth. So the reason is ozone layer protects the earth from the harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun. Now what are the steps that are being taken to limit this? Limited production of CFCs. What are CFCs? Chlorofluorocarbons which are generally used uh, in the refrigerator industries or the air conditioner industries. Now these chlorofluorocarbons produce chlorine at the higher levels of atmosphere. And this chlorine that is one molecule of chlorine has the capability to spoil 1 lakh ozone particles. So it is extremely harmful for the ozone layer and that is why the production of CFCs has been limited. In fact, it, it has to be banned. So it is actually in the process of banning the production of CFCs. Minimize the usage of pesticides because even pesticides are not good for the ozone layer. Usage of eco-friendly household cleaning products because they also interfere with the existence of ozone layer. Now, I did not discuss about the ozone layer much detail here because I have already discussed it in the previous slides. So, just wanted to give you an overview of, so that you can get an idea of whatever we have studied so far. So, with this, we reached the end of this lesson. So, I hope that this video helped you to understand our environment a little better than the textbooks. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.